The song was called New York City Girl. Oh, and I just said New York City Man. Look at yeah, that. Yeah. Wow. Do you remember any of it? Yeah, I was like, I'll tell you about it. I was very Dylan esque, you know what I mean, at that time. <laughs> Did you know who Dylan was? I was like 13, you know what I mean? When so, I was just listening but, to but Dylan. But were you Dylan? Oh, you were listening to I was listening to, to I started getting into, you know, uh, pop radio as a, as a young teenager and I'm absorbing the songs from like two of the best years of music when I started really listening to the radio, which so was. How'd it go? How'd it go? It was like, I'm going to tell you about a girl I met down in New York City. She blew my mind, she was so pretty. But one day I was looking in a smut shop window. And up come a girl asked if I was having fun. My girl from New York City. That was the hook. I got from New York City, and somewhere in the notebook is the rest of that song. All right. The only so, song I wrote during the 60s. All right, so that's the first, and this is the newest? I wrote this this morning. So this actually. is the bookends of your life. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. yeah. Wow. All right, I want to see it. Well, what this is actually is because I didn't want to bring my guitar because it was too hot. <laughs> and the acapella song I was gonna, I'm going to do is so short, really, I figured I would create this little intro piece to the acapella song. And so the intro piece is new, the song is not new, the song wrote in the uh, 90s. But this part that's starting is new, perfect. so we're getting the bookends. But the acapella piece is called Live and Learn, it's not, the song is called Money to Burn, and the, the piece, I guess it's a rap, I don't know what you call this, it is called Live and Learn. So it goes like this. They don't care, they just want money. They don't care if you live or die. They have a plan, and soon we all will, soon we all will say goodbye. They don't care about the children. They don't care about chicks and dudes. They just want you to buy their products and eat lots of their franken foods. Their bad seeds are killing bees and their bad crops make GM food. Soon it all will be upon us. The awakening will be rude. They don't care. They sold their souls. To them it's just population control. They don't care, but we must be aware. Now is the time to live and learn. 
Watch out for the ones in the darkness. They got a plan and they got money to burn. They're breaking down the rainforest for your cattle to graze. You got to make moments fall. Your burger chain might have become just another mall. Oh, when it did with the kids in the hall. Me, I'm 51 years young, and I got a song that ain't been sung about good food and fine wine. Have yourself a red and night time. Most of us just live and learn, but you got money to burn. Oh, oh, you got money to burn. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. Breaking down the ozone lane to raise up your bottom line. They poison so much of the water and they drink all the wine. The poor don't have that luxury. They're victims of your curse. But you be poor, well, it ain't no sin. Then there will be worse for those who covet good food. And fine wine, have yourself a really chill time. Most of us just live to work, but they've got money to burn. Oh, oh, they've got money to burn. Oh, oh, good food. And fine wine, have yourself a really nice time. But most of us just live and learn. But you've got money to burn. Oh, oh, you've got money to burn. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. All right, thanks for the Really? On the open mic in Folk City. Wow. 1981. Woo. 20 years after Dylan played right around the corner, his first open mic at the Cafe Wah. I came in there February 81, got up on stage, started singing a cappella, didn't have any people behind me, didn't know any of the musicians, just came out one night and people started clapping behind me, just like you guys today. And it was like, it became a phenomenon. <laughs> I get up there every week. And finally, I got some people playing behind me and then I learned guitar. And, you know, then, I came out of the poetry scene because I was doing spoken word first. And and what was that? The seventies? No, no, like eighty one. I was in college in the seventies. Okay, so you didn't right. even know you were going to be doing this then? Well, I went into college to become an investigative journalist. I was into like that Woodward and Bernstein thing. I was like, like all like, serious and like you know, totally like into like changing the world and like. Then I get in there, it's like 500 other people sitting next to me, want to be Barbara Walters or Dan Rather. And I said, you know, I'm not sure I want to do this now. And I started deciding that I decided I wanted to do poetry and music and be like Jim Morrison or something. And now, 30 years later, here I am. <laughs> yes. Wow. If I'd only become a journalist, right? What would what, what have happened? Well, you were, you, you booked and still continue to book artists in how many venues? Right now, I've, um, it's weird because I'm not making much money doing it and haven't really. But, uh, you know, sometimes I get lucky and have a club like the C Note, which uh, Paul used to do sound in there, actually. Uh, I made more money back when I was running my own club. You know? but, that's how you remember me? Exactly. The C Note. Oh, that's a wow. connection. Wow. Well, I played there a bunch. Yeah. Yeah. So I booked that room for eight years. But now I'm booking high level rooms. I'm booking. Cutting room, it's once in a while, not just occasional gigs. And uh, I had a band at BB Kings a couple months ago, you know, a band in Highline, and then uh, Bitter End and Bowery Electric. 
And the club that I've been playing in just went under, just closed. Another one bites the dust. So Zaman just closed, which is They did? Place. Yeah, no. you didn't even know? No. It's a great little room. The owner had enough. Announced it? Yeah, because yeah. They, they kept getting floods from upstairs and leaks, and the landlord wouldn't do anything about it, and the owner just stepped that up. So what, did it close five minutes ago? It closed with a bang <laughs> last Saturday night. Wow. I booked Hamill on trial for the last night, and he rocked that room, man. Did he know it was the last night? Well, I, a few days before it, I found out not very far before that. I had booked the gig a long time before. Right. And then I sent them an email. I said, you're playing the last Saturday night. And One more was, Saturday night. Wow, that's crazy. Because my friend really did the right. open mic on Sundays there. Yeah. Sunday, I think, was the very last night, last Sunday. So. Wow. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Well, it is and I was doing it's a residency in there, you know, once every few months I'd play. And it's the night I was with Paul hanging out, and I just played a gig, and Paul, you know, hooked me up with my living. So a shout out for Paul DaCosta. Yeah, so All how right. do people get gigs yeah. through you? They have to have a pretty, pretty big draw, right? Well, you know, the, the problem right now, I'm looking for a low-key room. I had this room, Geezy's, which was over in the East West Village on 8th Street. And I could book people that could bring a few people in, you know, and, and no cover. And then that room went under last, right after the hurricane. That, that room Damn, went under. it's really So now I've got these high-end rooms where people have to be able to really draw with a cover. And I'm looking for some new low-end rooms. So I'm working on some stuff for now. I'll keep you Low-end rooms. Yeah. Brooklyn! Oh. I'm on yeah. the high-end now. I need the low-end. Yeah. So what's your website? Say if somebody has a, a big following, how would they... How well, the website right now, in terms of, you know, wearing two hats, doing music and, and doing booking, I basically, I book through my email, and uh, which is newcenturybooking at yahoo.com. People can email me and I send you a list of what's open in the various venues at newcentury.com, uh, uh, newcentury at yahoo.com. But my Facebook, Michael McHugh, and the other Facebook page is really for artists that can upload music and videos there. That's New Century Heat Seekers Chart, Charts is the name of that. And also, for my music, I have a MySpace, the, the new MySpace. Does anybody go there? Well, now that it's the new MySpace, it's weird. I keep getting pics of people. I have a new MySpace. I know. I'm like, what yeah, the it's fuck? It's I was like, like Justin Timberlake is paying people now to do this or what? Oh, it's his. They redesigned it. He bought it. Yeah. Justin oh, wow. owns MySpace. He owns MySpace. And all of a sudden, it's hip again. You, you think? Know? I don't know, but if you want to hear the money to burn, the song I just did with music behind it, you go to my MySpace and it's on there. It's, cool. it's MySpace slash. Justin Timberlake. Yeah. Like, MySpace slash MCQ and the dude. Everything that goes around comes around. I heard Justin say that. There you go. And, um, all right, Mike. I need a good skeleton from your closet uh -oh. because I'm sure oh, it is National Daggery Day. Here comes the truth serum. Yeah. I've got a whole closet full of them. Well, we just want one. Uh -uh. One skeleton. You can have another oh, one. Oh, give me a strong one. Good. Well, She's trying to you're get a big me really man. To, she you, wants skeletons. Yeah. Well, how about this? A certain member of American royalty who was on your show recently and is looking for new band members, and I have some history to go. Is this like, can I guess who? Are you, is I this can like tell you. Oh, yeah. American royalty. American royalty? She's looking for band she, members she, for her new upcoming band. She's looking for band members for her new band that she's put. I just listened to the interview. Angie Bowie? No. She calls herself the royalty. The, the oh, name. princess? Yeah. Oh, she's wonderful. Yeah. We used to have an act together, actually, a duo act. Wow. A long time ago. And here's the weird thing about it. Sure. We lived here in this neighborhood. Really? And I moved back to Brooklyn. I hadn't been over here since I moved out, which was 1991. And I came here to, you to the Brandon Saloon like for your thing, your thing with oh. Buddy. And it was like the first night I was out in Brooklyn. It was like a week after I moved. So it was so weird. I mean, this neighborhood was so boring when I lived here in 91. There was nothing to do. We always went in the city. And now it's it's great over here. It's booming. It's awesome. Yeah. Brooklyn is booming. Brooklyn is booming, man. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. Yeah. So um, that's your skeleton? Wow. Who <laughs> <laughs> went over my head, I guess. Yeah, is that a skeleton? I don't even get it. It's a skeleton. It's a danger, man. Come yeah, on. Yeah, something edgy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 
30 uh, years you've been in this business yeah. and that's the best thing you've done? Well, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to think of what not to Come on, I'm having enough problems with the internet. Come on, give me a good story. Probably, all right, good story. Um, R rated. I'm just blanking out here. Dagger um, rated. Okay, okay, I have another drink. I'll all see. Right. I'm <laughs> Shot you. <laughs> there you go. Come on, Mike McHugh. Did you ever run out on? Did you ever dine and dash? I've done that, but you know now that I'm That's what I, I, I don't know. remember where. Huh? I've, I've done that though. Yeah. I, How big was the biggest one? Uh, biggest one. The Four Seasons. You did that oh, at the Four Seasons. Oh, did you really? Woo! Did you do it at the? Are you making that up? I'm making that up. Audience uh, guess. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, you gotta guess the scale. Guess the scale. I'm not guessing the scale. <laughs> I don't know you that well. I know, that's the thing. Yeah. All right, let me think, let me think. We're the legitimate skeletons. Let's see. Um, I don't know. Did you ever get a ticket? For driving? For I don't know. I don't drive. <laughs> Okay, you lived in the city, so how about public urinating? Once. All right, tell us. There you All right, go. I was arrested once and I was fingerprinted pr once. For what? But you know, I guess I'm such a clean record that these were things that were. What okay. were you peeing on the street or something? No, I was arrested for using a slug in the turnstile in the subway. Oh, I'm a raspberry for that. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. There you go. And back when I was a wild that man, works. and I used to, I used to get high. I, the, my guy that I used to buy from sold me slugs too. And he's like, hey, have some slugs. And I go, what is that, some new kind of pot or something? What's a slug? Then he goes, you put it in the turnstile instead of it and you save money. And I said, oh, cool. Let me have like 50 of them. So I was putting one in and they snagged me. Oh. How much were they, by the way? I don't remember, but they were, they were less than a token. Right. Exactly. And back then, tokens were cheaper. Yeah. So they, they, and and you were a, token. In a sting operation against slugs. I was snagged, right? Yeah. So they actually, I had to go to court. I actually had to go to court. And um, then what happened is um, I had to do uh, community service. I had to clean, I had, from using a slug, I had to clean graffiti off subway cars for a whole day. Wow. Isn't that insane? Good for you. I learned my lesson. No more slugs. Good for you. Well, and then I was fingerprinted once yeah. by a cop and taken into Union Square Station for playing in the subway. Oh, oh yeah, that, that Me yeah. and Jay Bird, the songwriter I used to, they used to book at the Speakeasy with, we were playing down in the L platform and they actually fingerprinted us. Yeah. And yeah. then they let us go. That's my criminal record. Good for you, know? you Mike McHugh. Did you, did you get hair on your chest for all that? I don't have much hair. No, I don't. It's really hard. There's other stuff, but I don't think you want to see that. Okay. We'll, have to, we'll have to give you some tattoos. tattoos. There you yeah, go. Exactly. Well, any last shout outs? Thank you so much for visiting. Uh, this is so much fun. I yeah. love your show. You're really... a legend, man. You have to come back. I will come back. And right. next time I'll bring a guitar. Sounds it's too hot to bring one today. So. Legend. Thank New you York so City much. Legend. And we'll put together something hopefully for my 30th anniversary of playing the New York Club scene around Columbus Day weekend. Stay tuned. Check my Facebook and Michael McHugh on Facebook and MCHUGH, and you know, we'll keep you posted and everything. And thanks so much. Thank thanks you so much, so much. Thank you. We'll be back. Thank we'll be you. back.